my hello folks. So I want to get back to the Kawasaki KZ650 project. I've just completed installing the rest of the valves. If you recall from a previous video I had started on the valves and, and began to show that process. I didn't uh, video the entire process of putting all eight valves in because that would have been redundant I thought. But uh, I just finished it up so the valves are now back in the head. Obviously the head's been cleaned up. If you had watched the previous videos that I had produced on this project, I had circled in red, as you see here, which I duplicated, the two cylinders that I discovered were leaking. That is, the valves were not seating properly due to carbon buildup. So um, I paid particular attention to getting these two cylinders to seal well. And uh, I have tested for leakage these two, that's number one and number two. I have not tested number three and number four because I just put the valves in. And in a few minutes I'll show you how I test, a real simple test that I use to verify that the valves in fact are sealing correctly. You'll also notice I had inserted the spark plugs, the original spark plugs in each hole that came out of that spark, that cylinder so that I can keep track of how each cylinder is burning when I get the bike back together and we'll compare that to the initial evaluation I had done on the spark plugs. Here's the top end view of the valves, all of them installed. It's going to look very redundant because essentially from this view it is. This is cylinder number four, three, two, and one because I have the head reversed right now. The next step will be placing the head on the cylinder block, getting it bolted in place, and then from there on we'll move on to installing the cams and finishing up the reassembly of the top end. In case anyone was interested, I thought I'd show the valve seals that came out of the bike. These are the originals. Obviously, I put all new ones in. Each valve have, has its own seal. There's, uh, it's missing on these because I, I actually damaged them or destroyed them, removing them. And there's usually like a lot of seals, a little spring that goes around the top circumference here under this lip. And then this retainer fits down over the top and over the uh, valve body. Um, I guess you'd call it a nipple that sticks up from the head. And this fits down over the top of it like that. And this spring clips over it and holds it in place. And the valve obviously comes up through the middle here. And this would sit like this and like this for each of the valves. So these are the old ones I took out. I'll throw these away. These are no longer usable. They're, they're used. They're 37 years old and uh, I'll just chuck them. No sense keeping them around. I thought I'd take a moment here to show a simple little method I use to test to see if in fact the valves are sealing. Again at the risk of repeating myself, number one and number three I knew were leaking from actually applying this same test I'm going to depict here for you in a moment earlier when I first broke the engine down. I knew I had a uh, light compression condition in number one and number three because I did a compression test. That's what led me to pulling the head off and then when I pulled the head it was all carboned up if, if you recall from previous videos. I cleaned it up and then I ran a simple little test and what that consists of and I will admit it's not scientific uh, if you really want to validate the condition of your head or valves, what you should do is a uh, leak down test. And I could have done that, but I didn't want to put the time and effort into it because I didn't believe it was necessary. I was very suspicious of the valves because of the way the compression test um, came out and what it told me. In another time, another place, maybe I'll talk about doing compression tests and how there's different methodologies you can use to determine whether it's rings or valves and that kind of thing. But nonetheless, based on that compression test, I was very confident it was, or I should say I was pretty confident, it was the valves. So I, I, I used the following test to determine which cylinders were giving me trouble. And that, it's very simple. What I do is I put mineral spirits, I fill each chamber up with mineral spirits and just let it set and see if it leaks. And uh, when I did that test last fall, I had discovered number one and number three both leaked. 
Number two and number four stay tight. And they didn't leak any fluid through to the, to the other end, top end, or through to the bottom of the uh, engine air cylinder head that sits here right now. I already had done this test uh, on number, cylinders number one and number two uh, a few days ago. So I know these two cylinders are tight. And I obviously was most concerned about number one because that's the one I had trouble with before. The only reason I circled in red was to depict what I had done before in previous videos. So at this point I'm going to fill each uh, of the head uh, cavities of uh, cylinder 3 and cylinder 4 with mineral spirits. And I'll let it sit overnight and see if it leaks down or leaks through. Now the reason I use mineral spirits is, is uh, two or three fold. One is it's relatively safe to use. It's not as volatile as gasoline or something like that. Number two, it doesn't have is quite a quick evaporation point as other more volatile fuels such as gasoline. You could use diesel fuel too, I suppose. I have it readily available. It's easy to work with and uh, that's what I've used for years. So I'm going to fill each of these with with mineral spirits. Then I will put a little uh, plastic container over each one to limit the evaporation overnight and then I'll check it in the morning and ideally I will see virtually no or very little leak through of the fluid past the valves. I did also place a white piece of paper towel, you can see it there, underneath those two cylinders which will tell me clearly if there's any leakage because it will stain the towel uh, versus maybe having a little minor evaporation. Okay, well, I've got uh, each head cavity filled with mineral spirits. Uh, I didn't overfill them, just brought it up as close to the rim as I could. And now I'll let them set overnight or so and see if any of the fluid appreciably disappears. Then I'll do is take a plastic container like you see here and I'll place it over the cylinders, combustion chambers like that for two primary reasons. One is just keep debris out, anything from getting in there inadvertently and though it might not actually help with the evaporation, it makes me feel better. And I believe it might. I've always done it that way, so I don't know if it helps or not, but I feel better about it. So I'll check this tomorrow, I'll let it sit overnight, and what I would expect to see, the desired condition, is virtually none of the fluid has leaked through the valves uh, and gotten down on that white paper towel, which would tell me I still have a leak somewhere. I'll check this in the morning after it's sat overnight, I'll give you a view of what things might look like, we'll see if we got a leak or not. Well, it's the next morning, folks, and I'm going to take a look at the cylinder head cavities where I placed the mineral spirits uh, late in the day yesterday. Do a little bit of a simple leak down to see if, in fact, the valves are now seating uh, correctly and tightly. So you can see the plastic cover, and there we go. And in fact, neither one of them leaked at all. I checked them uh, last evening. Uh, fairly late when I buttoned up the shop for the day and uh, the fluid level is essentially the same as it, that it was about uh, 12 hours ago or so. So uh, I think uh, these valves, let me get a little closer for you here, these valves are uh, good to go as they sit. I'm happy with the results. Previously, of course, we had, uh, or I had taken uh, or done a test similar to this on the other two cylinders last, that was actually last fall. So all four cylinders now have passed this simple little test. It's probably worth noting here that uh, you can do the test with the head 180 degrees, that is with the valve faces down, and you can pour the fluid into the uh, top end of the intake runners where the um, air fuel charge would typically pass through and that would be uh, that'd be another way of doing it. I have actually done it that way. I'm not as 
is uh, fond of that method is this one. Primarily is this way. I have a very clear visual of the fluid level. When you go the other route, uh, you tend to use more fluid, and I find it's just more awkward. Um, I'll start looking at the paper towel on the bottom to see if it actually leaked through. There's not a great visual uh, for me, particularly on, a, on this type of an engine. It's fairly complex head that uh, I just find this method is a little quicker, a little easier for me to use rather than pouring it through from the top and putting the valve faces down. But either method will work. This just happens to be my preferred method. And, and uh, a lot of years of using this, I've never had a problem with uh, the engine after the fact. So I think we've got all four valve, uh, valve uh, I should say all four cylinders, the valve sealed. The next step now will be putting the head back on the engine.